Oh, hey guys. Oh, hey guys. Just having some lunch, watching a movie, outside of some 1,000 year old petroglyphs. Welcome, Welcome to day to 17. Day 17. I slept in a bit late so I could catch up on some video editing. I'm trying to stick to one video a day, but it's pretty demanding. Internet is scarce here in these here parts, so if I'm missing for a few days, that's why. There were a few people walking outside of the gravel last night, uh, pretty late, like 2 a.m. Um, I really wish I had some cameras on the outside so I could have some eyes out there to see what's going on. Ah, another cloudy morning. Also windy. Maybe if I drive south far enough, I can escape these uh, mountain clouds, so I really need to get solar on these, on these panels. Ah, nice change in trees outside. I'm not sure, but I think these are cottonwoods. Ah, more 18%, 10% downgrades. These are getting pretty dangerous for me in this van. When I apply the brakes, the front wheel like shakes violently. But I did find a good use for the manual shifters in the van. If I put it down into third gear, it makes it slows the van down so I'll, uh, I don't have to rely on the brakes as much. I could look at the really nice view outside if I wasn't white knuckling the steering wheel right now. I like how you can see the um, sediment layers in this rock. Another pretty lake. Let's go in for a closer shot. Ah, I finally arrived at Verma, Utah. This was my destination from a couple nights ago. It took me a while to get here. Ah, yes, I love free museums. Bummer, it's closed today. Oh, at least they do have a few interesting war memorials out front. Here's one for uh, Vietnam. And here's another one for uh, the various wars of our time. Well, I want to get a feel for this town. Uh, this cafe looks pretty interesting from the outside. I like this sign. Oh man, this is creepy. This looks like uh, from the movie The Shining. All right, not, uh, not very interesting on the inside. I don't see any dinosaurs or King Tut. Well, I'm on my way to Denver, so I think a Denver omelet is appropriate. Yeah, it turns out there's nothing in here that's related to dinosaurs or King Tut. I mean, there's a few little figurines. Uh, the waitress is pretty shy, but she's really helpful. She gives me some directions to the dinosaur attraction that's not too far from here. Uh, apparently the cafe got its name because her husband is from Egypt and this is her hometown so he's King Tut and she's dinosaur in the relationship. I would say the sign out front would have to be the most interesting part of this visit. <laughs> On my way driving to the dinosaur exhibit I see there's a lot of these little dinosaur attractions. Kind of reminds me of when I was in Roswell I saw a lot of the businesses would use aliens for their advertising. Alright I've arrived at the Dinosaur National Monument. I pay the guy a $20 entry fee, and then I have to slap my head because I remember, oh man, I have the $80 national annual pass uh, for the national parks. So he processes a uh, return, gives me the uh, $20 back, so that was good. Uh, I am happy to have that sun back for the solar panels, though. I meet a little someone special out front. We kissed, but she tried to slip me some tongue. You're just lucky it wasn't this guy. Oh yeah, why? The midget <laughs> well, faded rattlesnake. Because it would be the midget faded rattlesnake. I'd be in the it, hospital right now. Uh, <laughs> or on, my or way on your way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you said um, mine was like a, a little baby gopher snake, a little cutie pie, just a little harmless snake. Yeah. He, what would happen if he did sink his fangs in me? Might get a little puncture. Yeah. Because, but it's swell. not venomous. Oh, it's not venomous. Yeah. Okay. So he's just as cute as I thought he was. Mm -hmm. This monument is built around a naturally occurring concentration of large dinosaur bones. They think that around 150 million years ago, um, there was a drought and many of the large dinosaurs would drink uh, from the Green River and for whatever reason they would die in the riverbed. Uh, years later, uh, rains would flood the river and the bones would wash down the stream and they get stuck in this area acting more or less as like a log jam for dinosaur bones. The weather conditions were just right in the coming years to provide a layer of silt over the bones so that they could act to preserve them. There's only a few large species represented here because the smaller bones they simply just washed down the stream and didn't caught up in the dinosaur bone log jam. All right, I want to check out some of the other main attractions, um, the petroglyphs, and they're about eight miles down the road. Okay, here we go. This is called the Fremont Mystery. They dated about 1,000 years old, and it's done by the Fremont people. 
they would use tools and they'd spend hours etching in the stone to produce uh, the images that you see here, like this big horned sheep and a tribal member uh, with a big hanging penis. And then I also went on a hike that put me between three canyon walls so that <laughs> I had a little fun yelling out and hearing my echoes come back to me. Time to start thinking where I'm going to camp for the night. The ranger chick told me about some BLM and state land that's okay to overnight on. So she gave me these directions and said, don't go up Blue Mountain Road, it's really steep. But I ended up going up Blue Mountain Road. Ah, it was really steep, uh, too steep for a two-wheel drive van. I wouldn't recommend doing that. I got about halfway up and then I realized, okay, I probably went too far and I turned around. Man, it is, it's just so frustrating looking for BLM land. Half the time I get lost. I wish there was an app or something like that to make it easier to find this. Um, I had just watched a video from Judy of 2012 Escape One on YouTube. Uh, she was hunting down some BLM land and um, she was fighting with her Garmin GPS. It was kind of funny. And uh, in the end, she, ga she gave up on finding the land, the BLM land. So I wish there was just an app that, was, that made it easier to find BLM land. I'm driving back, halfway back, I finally find something with primitive camp and it's like mostly level ground. But I said mostly, uh, the van is still kind of uh, not totally level. I need to get some chalks so that I can like level um, some of the wheels so I can drive up on them and provide uh, more level ground for my big metal tent. Alright, this is more like it. I got my dinner cooking, got a documentary playing. This one's 97% uh, owned, the Economic Truth documentary. I really recommend it. I'm also running the generator out of gas, so hopefully I can get rid of the gas fumes that I'm smelling in the van. I did a little research on the AC overload problem, and it sounds like it's going to be a pretty expensive fix. Uh, that, that sucks. I only got to use it one time for um, a hair blow dryer, and haven't used it in a year, and now this. But check out these red rock walls that I'm camping next to. This is That's pretty cool. And I also got to take a shower. That felt great. You guys have seen. I've done many videos on my shower now. Probably don't need to see that again. I feel so free right now. Just like this bird flying through the canyon. I've got nobody to judge me out here. No eyes staring me down when I'm working on my van out in a parking lot. They're probably like looking at me wondering, what's that big fan on the top of his van? Does he live in his van? I don't have a cell phone signal out here, which makes me a bit anxious, but it settles me down into relaxation as I know I've got a buffer between me and that busy, chaotic world that's miles away from me. I feel really at peace with my makeshift camp. I'd like to do more dispersed camping in the future. The sun sets and I run the generator through the night until I finally hear it struggle for its last strokes. And then the sound dies off. And it leaves only the sound and the gentle rocking of the van from the winds. It's a full moon, so I can't see the stars, but I can see pretty well around me. I feel safe being locked away in this big steel tent on wheels. I gotta do to get noticed. Start, I gotta get shot.